Hey guys, happy Friday to you. John Sensei here. The JET program application is open in the United States. Today's record date is Friday, October 26, and I hope that you are having success with your application wherever you are. So, anime and the JET program application. Pretty big topic for today's video. Something I used to get asked about a lot in my career. Why did I used to get asked about anime and the jet program application well because one thing I used to be a jet myself uh, I was an assistant language teacher from 2003 to 2006 but I was also a jet program coordinator so I worked on the inside of the jet program for th about three years and now we go to universities and schools and give talks about jet and answer questions and the whole anime one is something that that used to come up and I'm also a Japanese language teacher now. I teach at the Tennessee Language Center in Nashville, Tennessee, and try to help my students with their JET program applications, and this question comes up. I also tutor privately, and for anyone who would like to schedule a private lesson with me, all you do is go on my website, johnsensei.com, go down to that Schedule a Lesson or Consultation button, and find the services I offer, and pick the one that works for you, and schedule a time and date for it. Also, you can check out, since we're going to be talking about video games and such, my game, Hiragana Breaker, that's out on iOS and Android. It's a block-breaking game that helps people learn the basic Japanese character set of Hiragana, just through playing a video game. It's free to download, so check that out. So, let's get back to today's topic, anime and the jet application. And the question sort of that I specifically used to get all the time was, is it okay to say I like anime in my JET application? Maybe somewhere in my essay, maybe maybe somewhere on the application. Uh, for example, uh, there's this one section about hobbies and, and interest. Is, is it okay to maybe maybe put it in there? And so that's the question we're going to be tackling today. And I've got a couple issues to clear up first. Uh, one thing in this video is I'm going to be pretty blunt and I'm going to be pretty direct and someone hopping in might think I'm hating on anime nerds and I want to make very clear up front I'm not hating on anime otaku at all. I want to say this is a safe environment even though I may say some pretty directed and pointed things the reason I'm not hating on anime nerds is because I am one of you, clearly. I came from that ilk of anime otaku and had a successful career on the JET program and afterwards using my Japanese language ability. And if you don't believe me, I brought some things to prove it. Uh, recently I just went to a, a anime convention in the area called JBCon and they had, I was, I was staffing there actually, and uh, they had as prizes these these little posters and, and DVD inserts. And I'm like, well, Steins Gate, I love that show. You got to give me one of those. When They Cry, Higurashi no Nakakoto ni. I mean, I got, I got the Blu-rays, okay? I got the DVDs. You got to give me one of those. I was especially excited about this one. Poster for Record of Grand Crest War. How more anime do you get than Record of Grand Crest War? And when I was in Japan this past summer, I dropped 7,000 yen, almost $70, on the Record of Grand Crest War game because I knew it wouldn't be coming out in the U.S. I got Hatsune Miku as the landing page on my phone. So I'm not joking. Like I, This is like my main hobby. I, I, I live for this stuff in a way. Actually, I live to teach people Japanese. This is just what I enjoy. So let me just get that out there. I hope that proved it that I am an anime otaku myself, in a way, in a way, kind of public with it too, not always in everyone's face, uh, but I, this is my main hobby, it's something I really enjoy, and so I want to establish that I'm not hating on anime otaku, I am one of you, and number two, I am trying to help you, especially when it comes to being competitive for the JET program application, and one of the reasons I'm so thankful for my JET experience, why I still volunteer to contribute to JET info sessions and uh, I'm active as a JET alum 
is because I feel like I need to give back because Jet meant so much to me in my life. And one of the things it helped me with is it beat a lot of the otaku out of me. Even though I still have all this crap, uh, it definitely helped me mature and prioritize what was going on in my life beyond just my hobbies. And so I want to help other people be able to do that same thing before they get on Jet, maybe as part of the application process and make themselves more competitive. So let's define some terms here. Even though I've said anime, anime, anime a bunch of times, we use the word anime a lot in English to mean the wide array of Japanese pop culture, manga, video games, fashion, cosplay, and so on. And I also have an interest in this beyond just the hobby. Uh, if we go back to my website for a second, uh, part of my master's thesis was about anime students. And you can download my thesis on my website. Just go to johnsensei.com slash research. And it's right there. You just click on the link. You can download that. All you academics out there, uh, you're free to use this and just, just cite me if you do use it. Uh, so part of my research involved reading a lot of published psychology dissertations and articles and works about anime students and about those social groups surrounding Japanese pop culture. So in my own thesis, I, I, I tried to use the term, or I defined the term J-pop culture to mean all that crap. Uh, but even in my own speaking and discourse, I say anime to mean video games and manga and, and cosplay and, and all of that. So just wanted to define that term and set that out. Then when I say anime, it's not just specific to animation, animated shows and movies, but all this junk. Okay, that's defined. So let's go back to the question. Is it okay to say I like anime in my JET application? And I've got two answers for this. The first one is yes, but dot dot dot. And the second one is no, if dot dot dot. And so let me explain some context a little bit and then we'll come back to these answers and elaborate on what that dot 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 means. So I think in modern times it is very common for Japanese pop culture to be the catalyst, to be the introduction for a lot of us to Japan itself, whether it's anime or video games, cards, toys, whatever it is. And my own case is true. Even though I grew up in the 80s and 90s, I had Nintendo Entertainment System cartridges and I would look at them and on the back it would say Made in Japan and I was like, wow. Japan's where Nintendo's from. Japan is cool. So my own start was definitely very much like that. And in modern times, a lot of people are like that. And Japan, the Japanese government, definitely plays up this soft power influence of their popular culture. That's what all these posters in my office are about, the Cool Japan campaign. But now for a jet applicant, the problem can be is if the journey stops right here, that that person has never moved beyond just a fandom of the popular culture itself. For most people, and for the successful jet applicant people, again, the pop culture was just an introduction, a catalyst that led to some sort of deeper connection to Japan, some sort of pursuit of a deeper knowledge related to Japan or Japanese language or Japanese culture. Again, my own life, my own experience was I became fascinated with the Japanese language itself, detached from the anime. Okay, I don't have a master's degree in Japanese just so I can play video games and understand them in their original language. That love for the language itself was sincere. I was getting A's in all my Japanese college classes, and I had done a study abroad on my own for about three months at an intensive language school. And a lot of people, this is the case, they may go on to study a martial art 
and be be part of a local dojo and be progressing through the belt system of that art uh, they may have taken up a traditional Japanese craft like calligraphy or tea ceremony or ikebana and been taking lessons or pursuing knowledge in that so the pursuit of some sort of deeper knowledge or experience and then that deeper knowledge or experience again needs to be projected further into how are these skills usable in the JET program experience going back to my own story Japanese language was a very beneficial skill for me to have in the JET life and I was very clear about my goals in my application that I intended to get the Japanese language proficiency test JLPT level one before I left Japan and that again that interest was sincere and then I was also able to project after getting JLPT one how I would use that in my career beyond jet and I used it working in the automotive industry so I've been a part of or contributed to Japanese industry overseas and now I'm a Japanese language teacher promoting Japan and its language so the jet program not to be pompous is getting a return on its investment in me uh, as a jet alum as a Japanese language instructor as a translator whatever so I think again it's also important in the application to project not only how your skills will be beneficial to the jet life what can you bring to the classroom what are you looking forward to doing in your community keep studying this martial art uh, keep learning calligraphy or tea ceremony or flower arranging but then also how will that knowledge skills and experience project beyond your time in jet because jet is a lifetime thing you're a jet alum for life it's not limited to the one to five years on the program so could someone uh, pursuing that martial art maybe then in instruct that martial art or keep keep pursuing uh, belts up through black belt or participate and and teach other people and give demonstrations could someone who has learned tea ceremony or calligraphy then give demonstrations and teach at Japanese cultural festivals how can that skill and that experience be projected into the future that's what you want to reflect in your jet program application even if anime or video games or whatever was the initial catalyst and initial introduction now I'm going to come back for a second and just talk about some of the specific challenges I notice that applicants have if they do come from the anime background because I've seen it as a JET coordinator and I've seen it as someone who talks and gives a lot of presentations about JET and someone who also participates in anime fandom myself and I'm just going to get it out there and say that yes generally speaking not everyone generally speaking you can tell that people who come from the anime otaku background as jet applicants have poor social skills just just gonna say it just gonna say it and get it out of the way and I was kind of pondering this one time I was talking to a friend of mine who's involved with the Japanese circles but not into anime and we, we were talking about maybe to go into a, a Japan meetup group and and she was like ah, it's just a bunch of anime nerds there and I'm like hey <laughs> you're talking about me you know uh, she's like no 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 you're fine you've got good social skills and I'm like really really wow like I, I was kind of I was kind of flattered by by the compliment because again for real I'm into this stuff um, and then I started thinking like why that is and I, I was talking to another friend and I was like you know supposedly according to to her according to you guys right now um, that I turned out okay in terms of social skills we can all be better I'm still I'm still an introvert except when I'm teaching uh, you know again I would rather be at home on a Friday night playing record of Grand Crest War right now but I know I gotta help people with the jet program application and so I, I, I sort of posed this question to a group one time it's like why am I okay and other people aren't like why, why do you all compliment me and say I have you know functioning social skills but then as a group we look at we look at the anime otaku applicants and say they have poor social skills 
and and a friend of mine just just uh, straight up said it and this even had come up in my own research and I should have known it but anime groups so anime clubs at schools uh, anime conventions any sort of online groups online gaming groups and everything these are the social groups of the social outcast that's not me hating on anyone that is published psychological research that you can read you can pick up the sources in my own thesis on my website uh, that's just out there anime groups are the social group of the social outcast and so what my friend pointed out and what research has also backed up is that people with poor social skills interact with other people who have poor social skills and they don't have the opportunity to grow their social skills um, there are certain behaviors that are acceptable within anime clubs and at anime conventions that are not accepted in other social environments like work or school and what a lot of people watching this right now may think like hey man that's what a conventions all about you go and you dress up in a costume and you act stupid and you have a good time and come Monday you go back to work and you, and you act completely uh, normal and, and functional and for anyone who's able to do that who's able to separate the worlds like that that's great and maybe that's part of what I'm able to do but I think there's also been a lot written about the consistency of our behaviors across circles and that the behaviors one commits at anime conventions can carry over to these other work or school or other social situations where they're not accepted and then they're also especially not accepted on the jet program experience or living and working abroad in a different country with a different language and different culture as a fully functioning mature adult and that's what I think is is happening with with the anime background applicants is is their behaviors are consistent across all the circles and these behaviors accepted in anime groups are unacceptable in these other social circles so they don't really get to advance or improve their social skills even within these other circles because the behaviors that carry over sort of ostracize them further from the these other social groups and so this is what this chart is meant to represent uh, also I think you know back to myself I was involved in scouts I was I was on sports teams I played basketball you know sports that doesn't really mesh with a lot of anime nerds right guys I mean again I'm talking from experience here and so maybe someone who got into anime in middle school and then joined anime club in high school and is an anime club in in college and university and hasn't been in other social groups or clubs like scouts or sports teams uh, again has just stayed within the poor social skill group and not had the opportunity to grow themselves in another group so interpret that how you like um, you know to improve social skills we have to be social and that was sort of my original questions to my friends is like people in an anime background can be really social they go to conventions and they go to clubs but that's not the social situation that can help them improve those social skills and there are specific uh, social skill problems that I notice at conventions because again I go to a lot of them and I'm just going to call them out right here again understand that I want to help people that that I had some of these poor social skill problems myself and I think Jet beat a lot of it out of me and I'm not trying to hate on anyone I'm trying to help people but these specific social skill problems I see of anime otaku uh, the first one is a lack of empathy and that basically means not really appreciating or understanding like the the other the other person and uh, this may sound hypocritical of me for a minute but let's just 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 hang on so what do I mean by a lack of empathy let me explain through example I often go to conventions to promote my game like at a table or a booth 
or previously it was to promote the Nashville Cherry Blossom Festival because I'm on the planning committee and I run the festival's social media and I would we've made some great partnerships with the local anime conventions. I really love working with all these guys. And so I we do sort of like a space swap or you know try to help promote each other's events. So I would go to the convention sort of at a table like this and put out all my Cherry Blossom Festival brochures and just you know give people information about the festival as they walked by and since we have these great partnerships with these other anime conventions you know I'm friends with them and we all have tables at each other's events and we are all exhibitors and sort of have the same exhibitor experience and part of that experience is you know at a convention if I'm there to promote the Cherry Blossom Festival a lot of times I'm there by myself all weekend so if I gotta go get a drink of water or go to the bathroom or eat or go give a panel for an hour you know I have to leave my table and it can happen we've seen this happen repeatedly I will walk to get some water from the water cooler a few feet away over there I turn around and someone's sitting at my table and they've got like a plate of food and there's like rawr, 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 eating their eating their lunch at my cherry blossom table I come back, I'm like, eh, I don't know, you know? <laughs> like, it, it's obvious you had to put in effort. You had to see all the stuff here. You had to put in effort to walk around the table and take my seat and start eating your lunch right there. And this is what I'm talking about, the lack of empathy, the inability to understand, you know, I'm there to promote my event, that this is an area you don't walk in, uh, that, that you respect the this, this space of the exhibitors there. And I, I think that in anime circles we get we get so consumed with with our love of this and our consumption and our pursuit of this that we're not thinking about other people we're only thinking about what we want and another example of this uh, that I've seen and I I've presented this feedback to conventions before uh, a, a lot of them you know they just they just have it's such a great event they've got tons of attendees and maybe in a pretty small space like a hotel so you could have a hotel hallway with traffic going both ways and maybe 200 people coming this way and 200 people coming this way and you gotta get to panel rooms and dealer rooms and such and for the most part it works everybody is really cooperative and moving along until somebody sees a cosplayer with a costume that, that that they really love and they just freak out like oh my god your costume's so great I gotta get a picture I gotta get a picture hold up, hold up stand stand pose with the weapon pose with the weapon yeah 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 and while they're doing that then the hundreds of people trying to move in each direction everybody has to stop for this this photo shoot to happen and uh, one time I, I went to the feedback session for a convention and I said this, I said this, this is a problem, you know, this, this really gunks things up, uh, it, it, you have safety issues with that. What if there were designated little nooks and crannies in the hotel for cosplay photos? So if that situation happened, you'd say, hey, can we go to this alcove and, and take a picture instead of stopping everything? And so I presented this feedback and then I got like shouted down by the anime nerds in the room who were like, that's why we come to conventions is to cosplay and take pictures. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. Again, I'm one of you. See, Iron Man's my favorite Marvel Comics character. If I see somebody in an awesome Iron Man costume, I want to take a picture of it. Dude worked hard on it. I appreciate this. So it's not that like I don't get it, but it showed me that it's just about me. It's just about what I want to do. I want to take pictures. And that's the lack of empathy I'm talking about. And what this lack of empathy leads to then is the next problem, which is sort of the inability to read a room and read an atmosphere and kind of just seeing, you know, what will be acceptable or not in this situation socially. So going back to that hallway example, again, I I think that person had a sincere inability to read the room, to read the situation, and that when you stopped all these hundreds of people to take cosplay photos and people are getting upset and people are, are, are late for other events, that, that doesn't really register on their radar that that's happening, 
uh, because they're so into the world of I just want to take this picture. Uh, another example, uh, one convention I went to, I didn't see this, I just heard the story, but I completely believe it. I heard it from other exhibitor friends of mine. You know, I had a, there's this convention, I love these guys, they had planned their exhibitor rooms and dealer rooms all out very well, and their plan, because what the hotel had communicated to them uh, in documentation was that each of the exhibitors would have a six foot long table. And when they show up that morning to set up for the convention, the hotel is now putting out eight foot long tables. So they lose two feet for every exhibitor. And of course that completely messed up all their plans and I think they did the best they could in trying to rearrange tables and handle this situation. But what it led to was a very, very crowded situation, like dangerously crowded. And again, if traffic were moving two ways, if someone stopped to look at my Cherry Blossom Festival information, just them stopping to look stopped traffic from coming this way. And if someone stopped to look at a vendor over there, it stopped traffic going that way. And then if someone came through with a baby stroller or a wheelchair later, that just paralyzed an entire hallway. And there were real safety issues with that and, and possible ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, regulations that, that weren't being followed. And I was like, I ran out of brochures about halfway through the convention. That, that's how many people were there, which is great, you know, that they got a lot of people. And uh, I, I went and told the staff, I was like, look, guys, you know, I, I understand you're doing the best you can. I'm out of brochures. I'm going to clear out. You get rid of that table and open up some space. And uh, it, never, it never happened. The table stayed there uh, the rest of the weekend. Why? Because people would see the chair was empty and go sit there and eat their lunch, like I told you about. Um, and then what I heard is that despite this situation, uh, someone thought it would be a good idea to get one of those inflatable baby pools and fill it up with those plastic jump balls and then like jump in the pool and like just act stupid and have a good time. And then just what I heard is that the staff of the convention, who you would think in a normal social situation would come shut this down and explain this is, this is a terrible safety issue and everything, started jumping in the pool too. So this is an example of an inability to read a room of social behaviors not acceptable outside the convention, really even not acceptable at the convention with the situation they were in, uh, but this inability to read the room, no one, it, 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 I, I feel like people don't really notice it, like they're really not conscious of it. I can't criticize them or, or say anything about them because I really just don't think they're aware. They're not able to read the room that people are crowded and hot and getting pissed off and that no, this doesn't lighten up things, that no, people really don't appreciate you bringing this, this, this pool full of, of bouncy balls uh, into the middle of this convention floor. So that's number one, two, and three. And then the other thing that I notice at conventions uh, is a, well, is a support of a sort of false victimhood, a false victim mentality and a sense of learned helplessness. And I, I talked about in the earlier video this week about these two issues. Let me just real quick make clear we're not talking about real victims of, of any sort of situation. Uh, what we're talking about is people who face the daily challenges of life, traffic, weather, and always present themselves as a victim. Oh, I, traffic was so bad. Oh, woe is me, the weather. And then that leads to learned helplessness, saying I can't do something. Oh, I can't, I can't get to work on time because, you know, just traffic's so bad in my neighborhood without a look at what you can do better. I can get up 15 minutes earlier to avoid the traffic. And one of the things about the anime conventions being the social group of social outcasts, there's actually a a beautiful thing that arises from that is that anybody's accepted. You can go to a convention and be in middle school, you can be pushing 40 and still into this crap, uh, you could be uh, of any uh, socioeconomic background, any ethnicity, any religion, any political, any sexual orientation, and you are welcomed at an anime convention. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing that I wish we could copy paste to this entire country and this entire world. But through 
all of that acceptance and tolerance, it also supports the false victim mentality when people are like, oh, my boss hates me. I, just, I can't get anything done at work. Yo, tell me about it. I agree with you. I support you. Like, yeah, I'll support your victimhood. Oh, my teacher hates me and, and, and wrote a bad recommendation or wouldn't write a recommendation for me for JET. Oh, yeah, you know, I get it. I get it, man. Um, that, that sort of acceptance of everything is also accepting some of the wrong things to where wrong things in regards to growing oneself personally, in regards to maturing oneself personally, in regards to growing socially and having better social skills. That's what I'm talking about. It supports. So in uh, the video the other day, I recommended these three books specifically for the victim mentality thing. Please don't anyone, you may say, hey, you've got a lack of empathy now. You know, you don't understand what I've gone through. I, I don't. I don't. But what I recommend is you read these three books, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, Taking Life Head On by Hal Elrod, and Attitude is Everything by Keith Harold. These are the books that really helped me turn around my own victim mentality and sense of learned helplessness, and I'm sure they could do the same for you. In terms of improving the other social skills I talked about, uh, really the only recommendation I have is one of my favorite books of all time, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And if you do have good book recommendations for building social skills, please please share those in the comments. Uh, but The Seven Habits was, is probably the most revolutionary book I read in my life. It's a little hard for modern audiences to get through. It reads like it was written by an old, white, churchy, professory, rich guy in the 1980s, and it kind of was. Um, so some people may have trouble getting through that writing style, and there are summary books for it. I can't really speak to those, but the concepts, the concepts themselves are absolute and cross-cultural and eternal. And I think this is the book that can really help people turn around with having more empathy, being able to read social situations, doing a paradigm shift is what the book calls it, to see things from other people's perspective. And I used to cite this book a lot in my JET training when I was a JET coordinator um, because I think it's very important to see things from other people's perspectives and Japan sort of being that collective conscious you know at a Japanese anime convention one in Japan it would be more like oh, I want to I want to take a picture of this cosplayer but oh it's so crowded everybody's crowded everybody's doing their best to deal with the crowds maybe I can go ask them to go over here and, and we'll take a picture because I don't want to bother I don't want to bother the collective consciousness so being able to think more like that will help someone with their jet application to be more prepared more mature uh, for the possibility for the needed adaptability of living abroad and living in another culture so with that said let's come back to the original question all of that to get back to this question. Is it okay to say I like anime in my JET application? And my first answer was yes, but. Remember, it's most likely just the catalyst, just the introduction to Japan that has taken you somewhere further and you need to express where it has taken you and project where it will take you in the future. Your essay does not need to be half a page of how seeing Spirited Away for the first time made you feel, or Dragon Ball or whatever series. I have seen it. I have seen it. That is not a joke. And that's eating up a lot of real estate to talk about just the initial point of your narrative for how you got to the point that you're applying for the JET program. Uh, then going back to the question, is it okay to say I like anime in my JET application? The second answer was no if that person has not been able to move beyond just that surface level fandom and interest and has not really been able to grow themselves in other social circles outside of the anime groups. Um, you know, someone may study Japanese because they like this stuff, but
but if they're not sincere, they're going to flunk out of their Japanese classes. I've seen that a lot too. And so for this type of person, I don't really have a lot to advise you with except this because you may be panicking right now and thinking like, oh gosh, you know, I, I spent the whole page talking about Spirited Away. Now I've got to... Now I've got to write just a bunch of fluff, just a bunch of BS, and I've got to trick the JET program into liking me. All of that thought process is not the correct attitude to have. Um, if you ever think, how do I trick the JET program into liking me? This is a system that's been around for 30 years that has been very good at filtering uh, those type of people out. And again, as I've said in previous videos, more will get rejected at this stage of the application then we'll make it to the interviews likely or we'll especially depart for the jet program most of the people I'm talking to you're not going to make it and that's why I'm trying to, to, to help you with it and so if you do get rejected for the jet program it is very important to take that year between application periods and focus on ways of making yourself a better person fundamentally and I've talked about that in a lot of my other videos so for people in this category really I'd recommend some of the things I've talked about in my other videos check those out on the channel one thing people can do is coming up tomorrow tomorrow is the big day so this is the last time I will get to tell you guys about the Jet Application Workshop we are presenting at the Tennessee Language Center tomorrow, Saturday, October 27, 2018 at 1 p.m. Now what we do in this workshop is we're going to deep dive into the application itself, answer any of your questions, talk about some of these fundamental issues. How do I make myself a better JET program applicant? And then at the end, we will do a peer essay review. Attendees will swap essays with each other, read the essay and give feedback, and also receive feedback on your essay. Those of us JET alumni volunteers there, we cannot read your essays at this event, so please understand it is just a peer review essay. So really excited for this event. Uh, really been looking forward to it and uh, preparing for it. This is the second year we've done this, and I know of at least three people last year who who departed, and uh, I think it really does. It's it's one of the highest quality JET events I've been involved with, so I'm really looking forward to it. Now, if there's anything you want to hear me talk about in regards to JET, from my experience, just hop on over to my website or tweet it to me at Mr. John Sensei or like my Facebook page and comment there and I'll talk about that. Uh, again, wishing you all the best of luck with your JET program applications and I will see you in a future video.